you have 10 minutes? If you do, then sit down and hear what I have to say with regards to this hobby. Let's get started. Welcome back everyone. Thank you for being with me here today. If you haven't had a chance to follow me on Instagram, please do so. I have a lot of exclusive content that I will be uploading there, not on here, okay? Follow me there. Give me that support that I need in order for me to keep pushing hard and bringing you brand new fresh content like today's video. This is a list of things that are, I want to say, painful to me with regards to this hobby that we all love. And I think a lot of these things that I'm going to be itemizing can resonate with many of you. Now, of course, I know some of you may say that doesn't apply to me, that doesn't apply to me, that doesn't apply to me either, which is fine. But I think for the majority of you, all of these things are things that are 100% true. So why don't we just get started? First one, one of the things that really pains me about this hobby is the fact that this hobby oftentimes means that we do it alone. You know how you spend countless hours sitting down listening to your system and your spouse has no interest in it, your friends are not into this hobby, so you find yourself alone playing music until 2 o'clock in the morning all by yourself. That's one of the most painful things with regards to this hobby. I will say that this is just more fun when you share it with someone else. It would be cool if our significant others would get more involved, but I think a lot of it has to do with us. I don't know if that has to do with the fact that we don't want to share a system. We don't want anyone to touch it. We don't want anyone to clean it. But at the end of the day, that is one of the saddest things about being an audiophile. Just knowing that for the most part, I'd say three quarters of the time, you're going to do it by yourself. Um, I find myself here consistently, day in, day out, all alone. The next one is something that I've been thinking about for quite some time. And that would be lack of visual cues. Meaning that when we are listening to our music, we sit between the speakers and the only thing we stare at is the wall behind them. I find that hysterical, to be honest with you, because we're sitting down like this, right between the speakers, staring like a zombie. And oftentimes, at least for me anyway, it leads to me getting tired, fatigued, exhausted, and falling asleep. I wish there was a way that we could incorporate a screen, a television, that could allow us to also engage our vision. To me, that makes the entire experience much more real, much more engaging. Sometimes I find myself queuing up YouTube videos and watching the video of the song that I'm listening to in order to get more connected. And let me tell you, I don't know about you all, but for me, I get more into the music when I can see something, when I can watch something while I'm listening to my stereo system. Another fact, this one is quite painful. Too many options, too many options available to us. That leads to confusion. Too many power cords, too many ethernet cables, too many power supplies, too many little things that oftentimes frustrates us. Let me try that outlet. Let me try this cable. Let me try this preamplifier. Let me try this. Let me try that. And then instead of making progress, you end up going backwards. And that is due to the fact that we have way too many options. This next one ties with the previous, which is too much snake oil. Yes, sir. I have seen it. I have owned it. I can't tell you what that is, unfortunately. Okay. But there is too much snake oil, too many overpriced things that oftentimes shock me, 
shock me to see what some brands are charging for a product that's not evolutionary, a product that doesn't have anything special, basic technology put inside of a very good looking chassis oftentimes. Um, and that is another thing that enrages us as audiophiles because sometimes we wanna believe that that extra money that we spent on that next product is justified because of the price point. But in reality, that is nothing special. All it is, is a box full of wires with nothing inside. Again, snake oil is part of the hobby. Be careful out there. This is one that I'm so passionate about, okay? And that is too many unqualified opinions. Way too many people on forums giving opinions about equipment they have never heard, they have never owned. See, to me, the only qualified opinion that I take into account are those people who have owned the component that I'm looking to buy. Those individuals that can speak on what this product has brought to the table or did not bring to the table. I don't want to hear from the forum soldiers that are out there. A lot of minions on the forums giving you all these opinions about gear they have never even seen. And you all are guilty of listening to these fools all the time. How many times have you been on a forum and you took someone's opinion as gospel about a product that you're trying to buy only to read their signature and realize nothing is listed there as far as equipment that this person owns. And if they have listed something, that stereo system is inferior to the one you own. This is why I keep preaching day in, day out. Stop listening to foot soldiers, minions that are on forums, which in case you didn't know, in the event that you don't know, that person might be someone who was hired by a dealer, by a brand, by a manufacturer, whatever you want to call it, and their job or his job was to go on forums and promote a particular product. And they get paid to do this. Yes, this is a thing that nobody speaks about. There is so much cheerleading happening every day on forums. When you're reading someone's opinion about a product that the whole world is hyping up, you could be reading things from people that are hired to go on forums to promote such products. Be smart about this. Another thing that's very sad about this hobby is that there are so many scams online. Oh my God. I made a video about this a few weeks ago uh, with regards to someone in the UK pretending to be a high-end operation, high-end audio operation selling used gear. And at the end of the day, let me tell you, I gather more facts about this particular business. They actually messaged me on WhatsApp asking me to take down that video because they claim to be a serious, serious business, which by the way, I never took down the video. If you care to find it, please just search it. You'll find my video on this scam. There are so many dishonest people out there looking to take your money. And because we as audiophiles are always looking for the next great deal, we get caught. We get caught sending wire transfers overseas. Okay. Most of you who watch me, who are, who happen to be in the U S okay. Most of you are guilty of loving to buy for dirt cheap. And you get caught sending wire transfers to people overseas only to know after the fact that the product they sent you pictures of were indeed someone else's pictures of this product. You got to stop doing this to yourself. Protect yourself, please. Do not get caught on online scams. Another thing that pains me about this hobby. Oh, not all music sounds great. I think most of you... Most of you understand where I'm coming from. How many times have you played a song that you grew up listening to? You've spent all this money on a nice system. You've spent thousands of dollars of your hard earned money only to play that one track or those tracks from way back when and find out they sound really terrible. 
find out that they don't have the level of quality of today's recordings, you're lacking the sound stage, you're lacking the clarity, you're lacking the definition, the resolution, the nuance of today's best recordings. To me, that's so painful. Um, and sometimes we don't really even think about these things until we have built that system. Another thing is something that I have mentioned before, and that is the lack of female presence. Yes. If you remember last year, I shot a video with a female audiophile in uh, Chicago, Sharon. To me, that was one, one of the best videos I've had. And I was so happy. I was so proud to share with you her system, okay? And I think ever since then, she's already moved up from Alexia 1s to the Alexia Vs, I believe. So I'm actually looking to see if I can come back and shoot a video of her system today to see what it sounds like. You know, a part of me wishes that we could have more female audiophiles at shows. We could see more presence. And I don't know if it's because we as males dominate the industry so much that females don't feel welcome. I don't know if it's because maybe in our own homes, as husbands, we don't invite them to listen to our systems. We slap their wrists or their hands whenever they reach out for the remote control. I don't know if that's why they feel like they're not welcome. I am going to continue to make a big effort to make sure that I include more female audiophiles. To me, we got to make this more inclusive, okay? And I don't feel that we're doing enough as an audiophile community. Now, I just got done mentioning what I feel is very sad about this hobby, but I am sure I have forgotten a few things. Please comment below. Let me know what other things you feel are sad about this industry that we're all in. What are your experiences in general with the industry? I would love to hear from each and every one of you. Until next time, peace.